all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. Apple Max. Take it to the max. Introducing the Smart Kicker from iConnect, the most affordable smartphone on the market. With a photo focus capable 2 megapixel camera, you can't miss out on any of the action. Over 400 hours of standby battery time and 32 gig external memory. That's more than enough space for all your series, music, pics, apps and games. Get yours today from iConnect for a limited offer of only 499 kwacha, including 300 MB iSpot internet from iConnect. The Smart Kicker, available at iConnect. iConnect, make it happen. Want to just get out of town with your friends and family? Are you having a corporate getaway and have no adequate transport? Then this here is what you need to listen to. A brand new 35-seater Yutong luxury bus is now up for hire at an affordable and negotiable rate. It comes fully equipped with aircon, TV for your relaxation, music, soothing your trip, and DVD players to give you variety. Book now by calling 0955 0966-0977-844-141. What makes the new Yo-Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. So free, so let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. A quality product from Californian Beverages. Glad that you could join us on Prime TV's main news. Thank you so much indeed for your time. To begin, we look at the headlines. MMD denies links for a planned protest to destabilize Youth Day proceedings. UPND expels three MPs linked to Patriotic Front. DPP Mutembonchito demands a 2 million kwacha from Newton Muni for defamation. And in foreign news, South Sudan peace talks suspended indefinitely. These and other stories coming up.
with the details, my name is Daniel Tonga. Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, has denied links of a planned protest to destabilize Youth Day celebrations. MMD National Youth Secretary Boma Nusambo alleged that there is a secret operation to destabilize the Youth Day celebration by a group linked to former President Rupia Banda. Mr. Nusambo says he has written to Inspector General of Police over the matter and should arrest Rupia Banda's supporters allegedly planning to misbehave on Youth Day. He has charged that all those youths who want to misbehave on Youth Day under MMD regalia should face the wrath of the law. Mr. Lusambo says he has further information that youths who want to misbehave will be carrying dangerous weapons that will be harmful and the police must look out to arrest such culprits very important to the nation and we want to urge other political parties who want to shun these uh, events because these events are not uh, uh, party events they are national events so we hope and trust that all the political parties who participate in these uh, uh, youth and uh, women's day celebrations we want also to uh, to urge uh, the, the, the disgruntled people who want to disturb uh, the, the proceedings of the youth uh, and the women's day celebrations. These people are coming from our, um, our, our, um, our party. They expelled the members uh, such as uh, uh, Watson Mutonga and uh, uh, Muabi Lungu, uh, uh, Madame um, uh, Snyangwe. But we know what they are doing and we want to tell them that MMD has got only one um, president, and that president is Dr. Neva Sakwira Mumba. Copper Belt PF a provincial chairperson Stadi Mwali has refuted media reports that he has raised a complaint with the party top leadership over his being sidestepped for adoption for the Masaiti parliamentary seat. Mr. Mwali says he is in charge of the party on the Copper Belt and there is no way he can protest over the decision to adopt a candidate. He says he has been loyal to the party and is currently working with the people people of Masaiti and the candidate Michael Katambo to ensure the party is strengthened. He says PF Secretary General Davis Chama has not received any letter of a petition from him and that no one forced him to step aside. The PF party has adopted a former MMD MP Michael Katambo in the April 14th Masaiti parliamentary by-election whose seat was petitioned by Steady Mwali. I'm in charge of the government province, so I have a by-election in my society. I'm going to support a candidate there, and I'll never protest. I'm a very loyal person to the president. And also, I want to take this opportunity to say, no one forced me. The president had no hand in this. No one has, uh, even the secretary general, the Davis chairman, never had a hand in this. I was not forced to say I'm not going to stand. That was my personal conviction. I consulted my family. I consulted my provincial executive. I consulted even people who are not even my friends. I said, for now, uh, let me just uh, concentrate on making the party grow. And that's what I've done. So anyone who's talking about me protesting, they're cheating. You know, because if I have to protest, then I should do a letter. And they're saying I've written a letter to the secretary general. You should be smiling. I should be laughing at this because he, does, he has not received a letter, not even a phone call, not even SMS. So those who are talking about that, I think they're just dull people who are trying to exercise the, 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 the slow thinking and the small thinking. So I'm what I am, I will never speak in my heart. I will speak out and loud. Director of Public Prosecutions, Muntembonchito, is demanding a 2 million kwacha as damages for defamation from Newton Nguni. Mr. Mutembo is also demanding a further 4 million kwacha from Nguni's lawyers as damages for defamation. According to a letter of demand for damages addressed to Mr. Nguni, Nchito Advocates states that on February 11th, Nguni and his lawyers maliciously commenced a complaint against him in Chongwe, alleging that he had committed nine offenses, including an allegation of planting drugs on Banda's supporters, Brainer Changala.
Mutembo Nchito was dragged to court for allegations of violation of the laws of Zambia in a complaint by former finance deputy minister Newton Nguni. Mr. Nchito was facing 11 counts of criminal conduct, but his case was dismissed by the magistrate court after he entered a nolle prosecute in his own case. Multi-choice Zambia has charged that business has become difficult following the depreciation of the Kwacham. Multi-choice public relations manager Muika Malindima says there is need to put up measures and ensure that the Kwacha gains against other currencies to improve business in the country. He says the Kwacha is too weak and creating new commitments to improve it would help trigger economic growth. Mr. Malindima says if government improves the the strength of the kwacha it will allow people to have confidence in the currency and conduct business well he was speaking in an interview with prime tv all companies get affected when there's uh, such a thing happening it means cost of uh, doing business goes up so equally amount choice like every other company in the country is having to adjust you know to to work in line with uh, what the kwacha is giving in terms of what's obtaining on the ground. So yeah, I would say that um, we, are, we are working as a company to try and align ourselves with the depreciation of the kwacha. The depreciation of the kwacha will bring you heightened operational costs. That's the biggest challenge that uh, I could say that we are facing as a company. Based, like everyone else, we've heard of the mines talking about that being a problem. We've heard of the manufacturing industry talking about that being a problem. Also, those of us who are in the service industry are facing uh, that form of thing because um, we buy products that have to come across borders and then these exchange rates going up and down, fluctuation of the, of, of, of the, of the kwacha, tends to affect us time and again, and, and that's the, the thing that affects us as well. United Party for National Development, UPND, has expelled three of its members of parliament serving as deputy ministers in the Patriotic Front government. The three MPs have been booted out for campaigning against party president Akainde Hichilema in the January 20th presidential election. The three MPs are Greyford Monde for Itezitezi, Ritual Siamunene for Sinazongwe, and Sinjembela's Ponison. In Jehulu. The UPND has since written to the Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Patrick Matibini, requesting him to declare the three seats vacant following the expulsion from the party of the trio effective 21st May 2013. In a letter, UPND Secretary General Winston Chiwe says by campaigning for the PF in the presidential election, the three MPs brought the name of the party and that of the president into disrepute. We are now taking our first break. Uh, stay with us if you can for other interesting stories uh, coming up. all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. What's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages.
Potato sticks. Freaky fries. Get that awesome crunch. Welcome back and now other local stories. Government says there is need to invest and educate more women in the country if they are to attain their full potential. Gender and Child Development Minister Professor Nkanduluo says in order for a sadic vision of 50-50 to be achieved, women should take up active roles as they are the major contributors to the growth of the economy. She says young girls in rural areas need to be trained if the current trend of high levels of uneducated women is to be reduced to zero. Professor Luo said this when she officiated at the Zambia National Women's Lobby discussion ahead of the International Women's Day. She says in order for women to be recognized in society, there is need to ensure that they are protected from HIV and AIDS. Women's leadership is about women's participation in positions of decision making in order to influence the course of things at various levels. In our country context here in Zambia, I think that we as women need to be encouraged and we need a lot of facilitation for us to achieve the 50% that we want to achieve. And this should be at all sectors of our society, starting from rural Zambia to the urban cities. And where it starts, according to my reflection, starts from children. And that's why I'm happy that the ministry is called Minister of Gender and Child Development. And Zambia National Women's Lobby Chairperson Beauty Katebe says a survey that has been conducted shows that women still don't hold many decision-making positions. She says currently Zambia is still far from reaching the SADC 2015 vision of 50-50 gender equality as Zambian women are far less than 30% of holding decision-making positions. Ms. Katebe says there is need to narrow the gap between men and women and ensure equitable distribution of wealth. The deadline for, for the SADC declaration on gender and development of ensuring that there is 50% representation of men and women in all decision-making positions by 2015 is upon us and it is clear that Zambia will not attain this benchmark. This is very, very clear. When we look at the percentages, especially in key sectors where we are able to see the women in parliament, we are able to see the women in local government, we are able to see even now in the private sector because we just did a, a, a gender audit and we are seeing that we are not there at all. We are not even at 30% yet. So we are very very behind in terms of attaining the subject uh, declaration of 50, 50 uh, 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 representation. International Women's Day falls on the 8th of March and this year's theme is Gender is My Agenda, Zambia, Make It Happen. United Party for National Development, UPND, Mazabuka Member of Parliament, Garin Kombo, has apologized for his obscene remarks he made in Parliament last year. Mr. Nkombo told Parliament that his behavior was embarrassing and unparliamentary and that as a chief whip for UPND, his behavior was not good and befitting his status. National Assembly Speaker Dr. Patrick Matibini castigated Mazaboka Central Member of Parliament Gary Nkombo for using obscene language against Mpulungu Member of Parliament Freedom Sikazwe. Dr. Matibini says the word used by Nkombo against his counterpart was unparliamentary and said that parliament radio broadcast had to broadcast that to many people across the country. Mr. Nkombo is believed to have used unparliamentary language when debating in parliament. We are going for our second break. Stay with us if you can for some international news when we return.
Apple Max. Take it to the max. What makes the new Yo-Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. Just a pure experience of freshness. Potato chips. We know you'll love them. Welcome back and now in foreign news. Suspected Boko Haram fighters have killed dozens of people, including many children, in a massacre in the northeastern Nigeria village of Njaba. Security sources and witnesses have said security forces are saying that at least 45 people were killed by members of the armed group in Bono State, while the AFP news agency reports a higher toll of 68 people. Children were deliberately targeted for slaughter and most of Njaba was destroyed by fire. Njaba is close to the town of Dembwa and about 100 kilometers south of the state capital, Maiduguri. The military, backed by regional African forces, have in recent months sought to regain territory lost to the fighters. The government has also postponed national election by six weeks until March 28th to buy time in its efforts to bring Bring more stability in the troubled region. And finally, in our news, peace talks between the two warring parties in South Sudan have been suspended indefinitely. President Silva Kiir and his rival, rebel leader and former Vice President Riek Mecha, had been meeting in Ethiopia since Tuesday, but the talks were adjourned on Friday with no peace agreement in place. No further meetings were scheduled. East African Intergovernmental Body, IGAD, which organized the peace talks, is expected to issue a statement later on Friday, the Reuters news agency reported. Fighting erupted in December 2013 after a political dispute in which Kia sacked the former vice president. The fighting has killed more than 10,000 people and driven more than 1.5 million from their homes. The conflict runs along ethnic rifts that predate independence. For these and other stories, we did monitor Al Jazeera. A senior commander of the Al-Qaeda-linked rebel group Nasr Front has been killed in Syria. Abu Hamam al-Shami died in a government airstrike in the city of Idlib on Thursday. Initially, the Nusra Front had claimed al-Shami was killed in a U.S. drone attack last week. Now the group's confirming his death in Idlib, along with several other commanders. Zayna Hodder sent the latest from Beirut. What we know is that there was a high-level meeting of the senior commanders in Idlib when that meeting was targeted. Who is the Nusra Front? This is uh, Syria's al-Qaeda branch. They are powerful players on the ground. This is why analysts say this is a major blow. It's a powerful hit. Uh, this group really has been fighting on the front lines, d dealing uh, severe blows to the Syrian government. Meanwhile, a barrel bomb attack in Syria has killed at least 20 people and injured dozens more. Activists in the city of Aleppo say government helicopters attacked a rebel-held area in, on Friday. The UN Special Envoy to Syria has so far failed to get all sides to stop fighting in Aleppo. Fighters from the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant have started destroying one of Iraq's most important archaeological sites. The ancient Assyrian city of Nimrud lies on the Tigris River and dates back more than 3,000 years. The government says bulldozers were used on the antiquities during the assault. 
Russian opposition activist Alexei Navalny has just been released from prison after spending 15 days in custody for distributing leaflets. The leaflets promoted the rally last week at which Boris Nemtsov was due to speak, but Nemtsov was murdered in Moscow on the eve of the protest. Navalny has accused the Kremlin of ordering the killing. Libya's UN-recognized parliament in Tobruk says its forces will end airstrikes for three days to help peace talks in Morocco. Representatives from Libya's rival governments are meeting in Rabat to try to prevent full-blown civil war. A second deadline has passed in talks aimed at ending fighting in South Sudan. President Salva Kiir and his rival, former Vice President Riyak Mashar, have been meeting in Ethiopia since Tuesday. The original deadline set for Thursday was extended to finalize details on power sharing. Welcome back. As we conclude the news, we take a look at what made the headlines. MMD denies links for a planned protest to destabilize Youth Day proceedings. UPND expels three MPs linked to Patriotic Front. DPP Mutembonchito demands two million kwacha from Newton Nguni for defamation. And in foreign news, South Sudan peace talks suspended indefinitely. And that's just about what we had on our news. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, a recorded version of this bulletin can be accessed on our website, www.ptvzambia.com. This has been Daniel Tonga. Bye-bye for now. Hey girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. 